The Model Railroads and Structures Show is brought to you by Helicon Focus. Helicon Focus makes photo stacking easy while making post editing just plain simple. Get your 20% off a lifetime membership by going to modelersguild.com slash HF. And we thank Helicon Focus for their support of the Model Railroads and Structure Show. All right, I got kind of started already um, working on modeling up uh, windows and masonry surround for project Ron Perry and I started. Uh, well, it's been a while now. Uh, here's the project. Uh, nice little uh, three-story building with a wood wood cornice up top, and I've just provided a generic detail, um, and I've worked through some some 3D files. I might pull those up here shortly as we plow through. But right now, what I'm, I'm looking at and working on is the six over six double hung windows. And you'll see I've got that modeled up here, uh, real generic with SketchUp. Uh, the only thing that you have to keep in mind when you're building these files for 3D output is the the dimensional stability of the, the product that you're printing versus um, what the tolerances of the 3D printer are. I have a Prusa um, MK2S printer I just got a little over a month ago, uh, kit uh, built. So I put everything together, leveled everything up, and I've really, I've tested, I've got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 13 windows here. And I've really modeled this off of uh, two things. One, uh, this project that we're working on, just trying to get something simple. But really, this is for an RDA uh, model where I'm just, I'm not real happy with their their window fit. Um, they're loose and tight and inconsistent. So I was just kind of looking to see if I could get a little bit thinner profile. It's more of a historic thinner mullion. Um, and this prints real well based on my printer. And I'm not sure. Um, I've got got some here. Uh, plugged in. I'll, I'll jump back to this. I don't know if I'll be able to zoom in or not, but I've got a couple windows that I've already 3D printed plugged in and uh, got the tolerances pretty well. So they're, they're a snug fit. Uh, so it'd be minimal glue. But what I'm working on now is the masonry portion of this surround Oops. here. And I'm creating a profile of just this is a block that I can 3D print that then that window will sit behind, flush behind that window. Um, and I'm going to treat these big open spaces as uh, just standard brick sheeting for right now. I'm not getting into the printing of all those. Um, my goals are to print kind of these ornamental one-off features that you just can't get. Um, anywhere and that allows you to use sheet goods for your standard brick get a nice quality sheet product or even paper um, for that mix and match I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a little do a little testing on both so what I'm at I, got, I should have wish I'd have caught this in the, the beginning of the video when I started setting this up but really all I'm doing is I've created a perimeter here that is uh, 0.1 millimeters larger than the window opening I have here on the screen, or the, the, the surround, and then this will sit back flush. So I'll, I'll be testing back and forth to carve that. But right now what I'm trying to do is lay out my brick pattern and then I'm going to um, drop in my grout lines. I don't have any uh, detailed drawing, so I'm just gonna kind of wing it and I'm gonna try and keep it a little bit simple for just this tutorial that I'm working through and then be able to see if I can get a 3D print out of this later today. So that's what I'm doing here, and I basically extruded this up a depth of what scales out to about two feet. Um, I've got a, a conversion chart that I've worked through. Um, the, this is seven millimeters, and seven millimeters at uh, scale, 7.01 millimeters is two feet at HO scale. So what I've determined with my 3D printer is that I can get by without about a 0.2 millimeter gap. Um, that seems to print relatively okay. Um, it's not it's not perfect, but again, we're we're dealing with a scale that I'm I'm just I'm just trying to get a print out of it that that is masonry. So just real quick, what I'll show you here is that I'll take this 0.2 millimeter and I'm going to drop it 
0.2. And so that becomes my typical grout joint. Um, even horizontally, that's what I'm going to use. We'll see how um, things start working out um, in that regard. So that way, um, vertically, it's no problem with the printer. Um, it's your 3D printing, so you're not going to get crisp square edges, um, but it leaves an indentation. And then I've just been using flour for my grout infill. I know there's several other methods. I found that that right now seems to be the best uh, grout product. And so I'm looking to see how I might just uh, do like some zip texturing um, with maybe even plaster so I can color it up and get more of a gray instead of the white creamy powder color. But I'm just going to, I'm just going to work through um, this piece um, here and, and start seeing if I can't get a decent resemblance to what we're working on. And, and then, uh, I'll kind of tweak it from there once I once I try printing this. You'll see as I go through this um, how I'm going to modify the back. So I'm um, just offsetting. I, I've got these set at uh, 1.6 millimeters, um, which is wide, but it scales out to five and a half inches wide. I'm going to use that um, just for this mock-up, see how the 3D print comes out. It's going to be a lot better than the RDA. Brickwork, that stuff is just a nightmare mess, in my opinion. I'm not going to be quite as good as the, the Walters cast stuff, but um, it, it works well. So in this case, I'll go 1.4 and 1.6 and start the angle so that we can incorporate that angle by the time we get to, to this one. And then I'll offset that 0.2, that one we just did, 0.2 keep my grout joints consistent. And I've been trying to, um, for what it's worth, um, the 3D printing I've spent, it's probably a total of 80 hours by now, trying to fine tune what works, what doesn't work, and uh, the tolerances. And it's just, it's one of those things that I can't give a universal, um, but I've, I've just decided to work, start working in millimeters because my printer works it is in metric. It's not um, English. And so everything from the printer filament, which is 1.75 millimeters, to how all your layers and extrusions and the whole nine yards, it's just everything's in millimeters. So that's why I decided I just needed to convert it. Um, that way, I, I'm actually working in the nomen within the nomenclature of the printer itself instead of trying to do conversions and and stuff after I get done with the model. What I'm finding for my purposes, which is architectural modeling um, at eighth inch scale, um, I've been testing it with HO scale with a lot of things to see what level of detail um, I can realistically expect. Um, and, it's, and it's starting to get pretty tough getting down to my eighth inch scale stuff. So I'm going to have to cheat it even worse um, there. And that's why I'm working out the HO scale um, information because it, it tends, to, it seems to be working a little bit better. Not sure what I want to do here. I just got a slight angle in that one. I might go, let's do that. Let's, um, let's see what we got left up here. I got it. 4.49. Um, and I'm going to leave myself with here 1.4, 1 1.5, so kind of right in the middle. What's this look like? I can't tell if it's, it looks like it almost has a joint there, and these are a skinny piece. Maybe that's how I do it, is I'll come over here 1.4. We'll see how this looks here real quick. Again, everything's on the fly today. I didn't necessarily prepare um, as much as I, I probably could have um, for this. Um, just thought I'd try and get about 20 to 30 minutes of video of me working through um, how I typically do some stuff here uh, to get over to Ron. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to actually... Um, 
connect with Ron today. So that's why I want to do this. I'm, I'm trying to commit to some stuff um, so that so that Ron's got content. Um, it's one of the things we're trying to build this building. I'm going to uh, do the best I can to commit to him and uh, and get us get us a model that I can ship up to him and, and hopefully uh, kit bash. He can kit bash this thing and 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 do what he does best um, with just making models. And so uh, that's kind of where where things are at um, with this particular model. We we kind of got excited when we found this. Um, and I think the next one is, is going to be like the Ghostbusters uh, building, particularly um, since it's kind of kind of a unique uh, piece as well. So um, you can see here, I'm, I'm severely cheating this, but in the grand scheme of things, uh, probably what we find a lot of times in uh, models is that we don't necessarily... Uh, always get accurate representations. I'm just trying to do quick, and this isn't um, a, a big uh, to do about nothing here. I want to get some some content going. So you see, I'm just I'm going through, and oh, that's not what we want. We go down, create that corner. Um, I should go ahead and jump into the other side uh, before I forget what these dimensions were. Again, 1.4, um, just my grout joint at 0.2. Uh, we'll offset this one 0.1. Each side that gets that one going. Come over here. Actually, I think what I'll do here, um, I'll leave this one up to Ron. I'll uh, maybe he can throw in some some music. Uh, while I'm going and I'm just I'm just gonna uh, shut up and start drawing here uh, again I'm, I'm and, and just real quick I'm using some some simplistic modeling efforts because I haven't tested um, some advanced stuff in any way with a program called slicer which is the 3d program that what you pull your model into and then basically you're, you're slicing it in layers from top to bottom. And then you export that into what's called G-code. And that is what the 3D printer um, can read. Um, again, a lot of little nuances there um, within that. Um, I'll talk a little bit about those because um, I'm going I'm to jump into Slicer today with the model and just do a real brief preview since I've already test printed this with some decent success. Um, I'm not 100% satisfied. I think, think there's some things to tweak still, but but uh, I'll get there. So, all right, I'm just going to shut up, and you're going to watch me model the rest of this brick, and then I'll carve out uh, the back of this. So this window piece that we're looking at here will sit um, flush. I think I've got about a two two millimeter depth. I have to have this thickness here at the bottom. Uh, because I'm going to rotate this piece 90 degrees so that it's sitting upright on the bed. So this will be bottom on the print bed, and I'll print from the bottom layer up the side. And so I have to have about, I'm finding about two feet scale thickness is about what works real well to make sure I maintain adhesion to the bed, uh, the print bed. So with that, I will shut up and I'll let Ron cue some music.
I have been sharing my scale modeling experiences on YouTube free of charge for over two years now. In that time I've invested a lot of time and money into this project. Projects like these need funding to grow and I'm asking for your help. Patreon.com slash Ron Perry. All right, I don't know where, where Ron, I don't know how he's going to go through this, but just in the event that he picks up where our audio, I'm going to talk and not talk. Um, I'm not sure why SketchUp um, was doing what you just saw where I, where I was extruding. There it goes again, but it's not quite going all the way down to the line. Um, I'm not used to this. This is probably, the, I think, the first time I've ever had this happen. So I'm not sure um, what that's about. If anybody else has experienced that that's a SketchUp user, I'd, I'd love to, to know. Um, and that's one of the things with SketchUp is it is kind of, uh, I'm not used to using it for modeling like this. Um, I predominantly use it for... Uh, 3D modeling of my architectural work so that I can uh, clearly convey a quick design concept. Um, and so you'll see I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to be really clean here um, without a bunch of extra lines. Whereas in, when I regularly model, I don't even bother because I'm going to apply a material to it and it, it doesn't I don't have that issue when I render it. Um, I don't have the issue that I run into with 3D printing when I go to render things. I'm sorry, I don't have the issue when I go to render things like I have with 3D printing. And what I mean by that is, is what I found is, is that when you have miscellaneous lines that aren't part of a solid, it really, it's a 50-50 shot on what you're gonna get when it goes through Slicer, because it's looking um, at that line as an object um, when it's slicing. So you'll see, um, I go through and I delete all my guidelines and everything, um, just to try and keep the model as clean as I, as I can, knowing that when I go into slicer, it potentially, uh, could cause some hurdles. So, um, what I'm doing here is I'm returning the brick, you know, again, a detail that you're not typically going to see in a lot of the HO scale uh, plastic kits uh, because it's they just don't care quite frankly what I'm trying to do is see where those limits are and they're about mass producing I'm not so if it's worth this 10 minutes um, that I've spent here uh, pulling this together then you know what I've got a, a window surround that I can I know works and at some point I'll you know use this for more than one building potentially, but even if it's a one-off deal, uh, to me it's 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 worth it uh, for the ten minutes. And because once I hit print, um, I don't do squat, so that's kind of cool. I don't have to 
babysit everything. And so it's kind of a six one half a dozen the other. We can we can spend time modeling three dimensionally and try and go to a three D printer, um, which is who then is going to build you know this intricate work for us. Or we can try and build all this by hand, which uh, most people just aren't going to do. So here, because my you saw when I was building this. Um, I didn't have quite the exact dimensions, so we're just going to use this little accent piece. Um, real simple, just to get you know a little bit of a different detail. Um, I think I'll go 0.8, and then I'm going to push this down in uh, just a little bit, not much. Come on, wrong. Okay, there we go. 0.1. Uh, my printer actually handles um, overhangs fairly well. Um, as long as I don't get beyond 0.2, which is where that brick limit is. Um, it, it's so 0.1, um, I, I've not seen any issues on my printer yet, knock on wood. Um, so it should be able to handle this indentation really easy. I did a, a parapet, little parapet detail um, where I think that was set at 0.15 or 0.2, but effectively, um, I don't like this, but for what we're doing, um, you know, I, ideally I should probably angle this, but I'm going to see, just check some dimensions here real quick. Um, I don't know. I honestly haven't been paying any attention to the time, so I'm not sure. So I'm at 11.8. This one should be 11.6. 11.6. I've not test, tried to test fit anything. You'll see I, I had to push this back in because I realized that this has a overhang. So I'm going to I'm going to cut this bottom piece off so that it'll slide right into this uh, from the back and uh, and hopefully, you know, you know, work out just fine. And then the other thing I did, you notice that I, I, I indented this piece back here, pushed, pushed it in on each side because you're going to have to cut a hole in your brick sheet um, in order to do that. So this is what I'm talking about. I like to clean up anything there. That was my guideline for the depth of my window. So that's a, it should be pretty darn close, hopefully, to that edge of that brick so that you pick up the return edge on the brick detail. I'm not going to model the outside edge. Um, I want to, I try not to, to get more than about 30 minutes to an hour of work in on models before I run a test print. Um, just because obviously you don't want to spend a lot of time. This, I, you know, every now and then I've got something messed up in my geometry here. I don't know what it was. I tried to find it. You saw the error there when I was not, I was trying to open this up, make it one plane. Um, things just, again, cleaning, cleaning drawings up. Things seem to print better if they, if they're cleaner and the slicer can get through without any issues. So we're going to go at a 0.2 millimeter layer height print. So I haven't checked my bottom yet. I may need to extend it just a touch. Um, but my printer lays a base layer um, as a default at 0.2. So the first layer it prints for bed adhesion is always 0.2 millimeters. So then what I do is I, I build up and I'll, I'll show this here in a second because um, I'm not going to print these at the same time. I have a, a sample here on this other piece that I'll see if they fit. But you'll notice that um, here on this window that I pulled in as a reference, it's set at 0.35. So the first layer is 0.25. I have this window set up to print at 0.15 millimeter layer height after that. So I build the layers up with the mindset of knowing that it's going to slice pretty accurately um, at 0.15 millimeters from the top down and then leave the last one at 0.2. So not, I haven't done that with this one. Um, I'm just going to go 0 0.2. Um, so I, as long as I'm an even number here, I uh, can't be right. 30.3. Looks like I got something way off. I guess it could be 30.3. Um, I'm going to stretch this out just 0.1 more uh, so that everything stays even. It doesn't screw things up. You'll never see it in HO scale. So, all right, last thing, we're going to take this, we're going to rotate it. I rotate command, get over here. Did I 
size matter on this way. I'm gonna flip it 90. And then I'm gonna take this, move it out of the way for a second. And I'm gonna take this one. Right now we got everything set up as a block. But we're going to explode that here in a second. Okay, how do I get? Is not down at the correct plane. We've got to move this over. I like to center these up um, so that when I go to pull them in the slicer, which we're going to do here in a second, you'll see that it, it pulls it into the middle of the bed. All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save this real quick and I'm going to do a save as and just do masonry surround. I saved that one. I'm going to get rid of that. All right, so now we want to take this and we want to explode it. Okay, just a real quick check. I can't get rid of that one. Um, looks like all the other ones are up. Oh, there's one right there. Done. Done. All right, now the SketchUp. Um, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to, oh, looks like I got some, I'm going to get rid of all that. Clean as possible. Okay, so we'll save that. Now we have a raw file in HO scale, and you have to bring in uh, a, an add-on, um, a Ruby extension, and it's I think it's called Export SL uh, is the extension. So you extend that, and then you're looking because you have to. Everything has to work. Um, it's an STL file for Slicer. Okay, so we're gonna make some, save that now. Where is my slicer? Let's see if I've got it. Okay, now do this. Bear with me a second. Okay, Prusa Slicer. So this is the slicing program. And uh, hopefully all will go well here. When I import, we're going to, I'm sorry, add. And then we're going, we need to find that masonry file. I'm not sure where I put it. Brick model test, masonry surround STL open. Ah, there we go. Okay, so now we're in. Um, one shell is always good, so that means it, it pulled it in clean, so that was nice. Um, you, you, I was, was a little nervous, not sure where they were going to pull it in. And, um, so we'll see how this goes. So you'll see the print settings uh, normal. You've got 0 0.05, which is detail, which does work. Um, but I'm just not seeing it with the masonry um, work that I've been doing. 0 0.2, 0 0.15 seems to work real well. This is my filament that I currently have in the printer, and then this is the print printer itself. Okay, I'm not going to go into all these other settings uh, for this. We're just going to hit slice. Okay, generates a file. Um, it's quick because it's so small. Now we're come over here and we're going to export G-code. And I, it's, it's in the brick model test, so that's where I want it. I want to leave the masonry G-code. Perfect. Save. Okay. Um, this is great down here in the bottom right-hand corner. A lot of times I've been getting errors when I do masonry work. So even with that one line in there, um, things seem to have gone pretty well. So now what, you, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into program called Pronterface. That is my um, direct link to my 3D printer and I have a hardwire connection. Uh, so we'll connect and I will preheat for the filament that I have in here. I need to do a quick bed, bed clean. I just like to wipe the, the grease off. They, they don't even need a heated bed for printing with PLA. Um, I'm not even jacked with ABS or PETG yet. I'm not interested. I'm trying to perfect PLA before I even think about moving on because quite frankly, it works perfect for, for the modeling stuff that I'm dealing with. Okay, so um, it's right now, you'll see, I, I don't typically go through this, but since you can't see my printer, it's heating up 
the both the nozzle head and the bed. The bed temp is set at 55 and the nozzle uh, is set at 215. Nozzle will cool down to 210, 208 when it's printing um, after it gets past that first layer. So, okay, so we've got our G-code, masonry surround G-code open. Now to place this right in the middle of the bed, pretty darn close, okay? Um, I'm not gonna click on this to zoom in. Actually, I'll go ahead. Okay, basically what this is, it gives you a preview if you want to look at the layers of how things are gonna print. Um, I'm not really interested in that, but what you'll see up here is it gives you some parameters, how large the print is. This is one I always look at. How long is it gonna take? It's gonna take 10 minutes to print. So um, usually I find this is just a shy less than what it actually takes. It'll probably take closer to 12 minutes. Uh, maybe 13 minutes to print, but it'll go through. It's ready, so I'll hit print. And that's all I have for right now, so I'm going to stop. And we'll call it a day for that one. Thanks, guys.